I don't care if it's a family wedding or what, but do you think it's acceptable to take a day off on the day of an important client's founding anniversary party? My boss, Catherine, said that as she rejected my request for paid leave. My name is Michael. I graduated from college this year and joined a well-known major food company, famous for its TV commercials, and it's been six months since I started. I come from a single-parent family, living with my mom and my older sister. My mother, who works in a restaurant, doesn't turn much, and our family's life was tough when my sister and I were young. My sister, Elizabeth, five years older than me, didn't go to high school after finishing middle school. Instead, she got a job at a flower shop to help support our family along with our mother. So, I thought I have to work right after middle school, but my sister stopped me. You are smarter than me and you like studying, so make sure you go to college. I'll figure out about the tuition. Thanks to her, she paid for my education and I was able to attend college. That's how I landed a job at a big corporation. Now, she's getting married next month. As her only brother, I absolutely want to attend and celebrate. That's why I begged Catherine, my boss, bowing deeply. Please, it's my sister's wedding. She quit school after middle school to work and support our family, even paying for my college tuition. I really want to celebrate her wedding. But Catherine just sneered and laughed through her nose. Oh, your sister only finished middle school. Must have been quite a poor upbringing to have to work instead of going to high school. Unbelievably, Catherine started looking down on my family. Anyway, it's been decided long ago that everyone in our sales division attends the client's founding anniversary party, especially for newcomers. It's a chance to be remembered, so I can't approve any leave for any reason. She said, and then tore up my leave application. Really, young people these days take their jobs too lightly. She sighed with a stern look in her eyes. Catherine has always been a strong-willed, archetypal female boss, but she seemed particularly unyielding on this matter. Reluctantly, I backed down for the time being. Then, a month later, on the morning of my sister's wedding day, I'm taking the day off after all. I called in. Catherine was furious. Come in now, or I'll fire you. I was yelled at like that, but my decision remained unchanged. What a way to speak. At this point, I don't care if I get fired. I'd rather find a new job than work under such an oblivious boss. But then, my sister, who seemed to have overheard the call, approached me with a worried look. What's wrong? The person on the phone sounded really angry. I could hear it from here. It seemed she heard Catherine's yelling. Actually, there's a company anniversary party today. I explained the situation to her. Her face turned pale. What have you done? Go to work right now and attend the party. Forget about my wedding. But I have the right to take paid leave. I applied a month in advance. Even if it clashes with an important party, it's unfair not to be allowed to take leave on such an important day. But if you keep that up, you'll get fired. You just got this job. It's okay. I'm still young and educated. I'll find another job quickly. I reassured her and sent her off to prepare for her wedding. The wedding went smoothly that day. But my phone, set to silent mode, was filled with numerous missed calls from Catherine. The next day, I was called in by both Catherine and our department head, Harrison. Michael, why did you take an unauthorized leave yesterday? Harrison immediately said that upon seeing me. What? I didn't take an authorized leave. I submitted my application a month in advance, but Catherine tore it up. I also called in the morning of the day. At this, Catherine turned red with anger. Don't lie, Harrison. I never received any application, nor did I tear it up. I didn't receive any call that day either. I was shocked to be called a liar. Catherine was the real liar. Then show us your phone call history, if you have nothing to hide. 
you should be able to show it, right? Upon being challenged by Harrison, Catherine became indignant. That's an invasion of privacy. I can't comply. Instead, I showed Harrison the call history on my phone. It had a record of the call I made to Catherine that morning. Catherine, it seems you're the one lying. Harrison, but I truly didn't receive any leave application. It's outrageous to call in the morning of the day, knowing you plan to take a leave. Please fire Michael. Catherine, we can fire a valuable employee for such a reason. Harrison defended me. That's the way of a major corporation. Not just anyone like Catherine can fire an employee. I breathed a sigh of relief. But from that day on, Catherine's terrible harassment to me began. You're from a single parent family, aren't you? No wonder you dress so poorly. I bet your suit is from some cheap discount store. Remember, we're a major corporation. Please dress properly so as not to tarnish our image. She must have found out somehow that my family was a single parent household and ridiculed me every chance she got. Your sister probably couldn't get into a decent company either. Poor thing. Poverty seems to run in the family. I was infuriated, not just about the comments about my mother, but my sister too. My sister works at a well-known flower shop. When I retorted that, Catherine turned pale, repeating my words. That shop? Yes, the one in front of the station. I wondered if she knew it. Is your sister's name, Elizabeth, by any chance? Catherine guessed my sister's name correctly. Yes, but do you know her? That's it. You're Elizabeth's brother. Catherine seemed not to hear me anymore and started muttering to herself. Then, on the following Sunday night, my sister called me. Catherine from your company brought a wedding gift to our shop today. Catherine, why? Actually, I met her a long time ago. My sister said that and began to talk about what happened back then. It was an incident that happened five years ago. My sister was working at the flower shop in front of the city station that day too. With no customers around at that time, my sister looked up at the pedestrian bridge in front of the station. There was a woman there, seemingly lost in thought. The woman didn't move from that spot for 20 minutes. Eventually, she made a motion as if to lean over the railing of the bridge. Below was a wide highway, with large vehicles like trucks speeding by. She was about to jump official. Realizing this, my sister rushed out of the shop, ran up the stairs to the bridge. She then looked into her face from the side and spoke to her gently and calmly so as not to provoke her. Ma'am, is something bothering you? I'm here to listen if you want to talk anything at all. Oh, how about we go and have a drink together? I know a great place. My sister, seeing the woman in distress, took her hand and gently pulled her towards herself. She then went straight down the pedestrian bridge and back to the flower shop and told the manager why she was there and asked to be allowed to leave early. The manager graciously agreed. Afterward, my sister took the woman to a nearby pub and treated her a meal and some drinks. The best thing when you're feeling down is to eat something delicious and have someone listen to you. Saying so, my sister listened to her story. The woman, about a decade older than my sister at 35, shared that she had been abandoned by her live-in partner, whom she was planning to marry, leading her to despair. I've been dumped at this age, and now I probably won't ever get married. My life seems utterly hopeless. Saying that, she cried. My sister consoled her empathetically. I understand how sad and painful it is. I've been through a breakup too. It feels like the end of the world. As my sister showed empathy, the woman argued back. But you're still young. You have your whole life ahead. I don't have a future anymore. However, my sister continued to encourage her persistently. No, I don't think so. You're a wonderful person, so age doesn't matter. I am sure that one day you will meet someone who will love you with all their heart. 
my sister continued to listen to her complaints. Later, they went to another bar, helping the woman to vent her stress. Thank you so much for today. I feel much better now. She said to my sister as they were leaving. Whenever you want to relieve stress again, just call me. Saying this, they exchanged contact information and later, she treated my sister to a meal. Shockingly, that woman was Catherine. However, after that incident, Catherine transferred to Los Angeles and they gradually lost touch. Three years later, Catherine returned to New York, fell in love with a man she met through work, and got married. Today, she visited my sister's shop and said, If I had jumped off that bridge back then, I wouldn't have met my husband. I'm happy now thanks to Elizabeth. She then presented my sister with a wedding gift. To think that Catherine was an acquaintance of my sister was surprising. It was surprising to learn that she had such a past. I had only seen her as a strong and confident figure at work. She was reflecting on the bad things she did to you. My sister said that over the phone. She said she treated you the same way because her boss was tough on her when she was young, but when your boss defended you, she got angry and said a lot of unpleasant things. She's really regretting it now. Even hearing these excuses, I couldn't forgive her for trying to get me fired with lies and for insulting my mother and sister. But the next day, Catherine called me to the conference room. Michael, I'm sorry for everything. I was wrong. She sincerely apologized to me. After meeting Elizabeth again, I remembered the importance of caring for others. I've been terrible, trying to do to you what was done to me when I was younger, lying, being sarcastic, and just being the worst. When I remained silent, she continued. I think Elizabeth told you, but she's my life saver. I really regret treating her brother so badly. I can ask for forgiveness but I intend to change and become better. I had no intention of forgiving her, but I couldn't ignore such a sincere apology. I was wrong too. Taking a leave without your approval was wrong, but I will never forgive you for mocking my mother and sister. Catherine looked at me as if seeing something amazing. Michael, you really care about your mother and sister. Of course, I was able to go to college thanks to them. That's wonderful. I'm truly sorry for how I spoke about them. Let me treat you tonight. How about we go for a drink? Oh, why don't you invite Elizabeth too? So, I reluctantly agreed. And that night, Catherine, my sister, and I went for drinks at a pub near the office. Catherine shared various stories about her younger days at the company. Catherine was discriminated against by her then manager, Harrison, just because of her gender and treated harshly. She had been looked down upon a lot, such as just because you're a woman or women are always like that. At that time, Harrison was particularly focused on a client, and when Catherine's grandmother passed away, the funeral clashed with the client's founding anniversary party. When Catherine asked for a paid leave, Harrison was furious. If you take leave, you'll be fired. Upon hearing that, she tearfully attended a party instead of her beloved grandmother's funeral. Because of such experiences, Catherine, now a supervisor, ended up doing the same thing to me, her subordinate. It was the worst way of thinking, doing to others what was done to me. I should have taken it as a lesson of what not to do. Seeing Elizabeth after so long made me feel ashamed of what I was doing. Understood, Catherine. Realizing it is what's important. My sister said that and comforted Catherine. Looking at my sister, Catherine said, I didn't know, but it was wrong of me to mock someone as good as you. Then I told her, Learn from this and never judge or look down on people based on their education or family background, no matter who they are. Catherine then shrugged her shoulders in embarrassment. I've reflected on it. I won't do it again. Since then, Catherine stopped being harsh to me. She became known for being kind not just to me, but to all the employees. And sometimes, Catherine, my sister, and I would go out for drinks together. 
Thus, Catherine and I, while being supervisor and subordinate, built a good relationship without any awkwardness.